for the, the, the <laughs> tedious rest. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome to uh, this panel. This is um, Breaking Into Commercials. Uh, I'm Jamie Madge, I'm the editor of The Real. Um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to grill these guys, a, a panel of industry experts here, on what it takes to, uh, to break into commercials, what they're looking for, what directors can do to get themselves noticed and, and the like. We've got some questions from Twitter um, that we're going to be asking and I'm going to be asking if you guys have any questions as well, so don't, don't be backwards about uh, coming forwards on that. Um, first of all, I'll just introduce you to our panel here. Um, and then each of them are going to come up and uh, do a quick presentation just to talk through what their company does and what they do in their company. Um, so to begin with, we've got Chris O'Reilly, who's the co-founder of Nexus. Yeah. Uh, Chris Jim Brody, who's the head of development in Agile Films. Jamie Clark, who's the head of talent at Pulse. And Seb Edwards, who's the director at Academy Films. Um, should we kick off with uh, Chris? Sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We should probably. Uh, we've been going since about 1997. Um, and uh, we represent um, directors uh, working in mostly a kind of animation and live action animation uh, hybrid forms. Um, commercials is kind of like the core of our business and I know this is a kind of sort of a focus on that side of the business although we work across music videos, short films, uh, we've, we've done TV series, um, <laughs> we've done animated title sequences, we did like the title sequence to films like Catch Me If You Can and uh, lemony snicket and stuff like that but um but commercials is really kind of the engine of the business and i think that's pretty pretty much true of any um animation focused outfit in europe it's a really kind of important part of what we do um but um just very quickly my background um i started nexus i'd, I'd actually been living in japan um and uh japan was like a kind of art school for me and that's where i really got into uh, kind of graphic culture and um it, this was japan in the mid 90s but kind of just the kind of the weird stuff that you get in Japan in terms of watching TV late at night and not really understanding what the heck was going on and um, and even the familiar things in life like you know suddenly seemed kind of strange there and that was a really sort of inspirational for me and that's what uh, Nexus's roots were we actually were originally a Japanese company um, uh, and, and uh, in 2000 my business partner and I affected a kind of buyout of that company and so it's a wholly London based outfit now but that's part of our history. Uh, I'm Jamie Clark. Um, I'm head of talent at Pulse Films. Um, Pulse is a production company. We've been around six years as well, actually. Um, we are not in Shoreditch, we're in Soho. Um, I'm one of the original members at Pulse. So we, we set Pulse up six years ago um, with a view of working, uh, signing directors and working across uh, different areas of the business instead of just uh, a lot of other companies uh, used to work on the kind of music videos and commercials route we wanted to work across the board. Um, through that we set up uh, advertising department, we have a TV department, we have documentary department as well. Um, so all these departments are up and running at Pulse um, and what we've tried to do is um, we bring directors in and we, we want the company to facilitate projects for them uh, and, and, and push forward and develop them as directors really. Um, we also want to look at what directors are doing what they want to do and try and make that work so um, if a director wants to move into advertising how how can we facilitate that um, if a director has a short film project or a comedy test or or, or, um, or even an installation piece they want to do how can we make that work how can we raise the money for it um, and also kind of work out how it's going to uh, help either one of their reels for um, you know, commercial work or music video work so that's a brief insight into what into Pulse and what I do. Um, hi, my name is um, Seb Edwards. Um, I'm a director at Academy Films, um, and I've been directing out of Academy for about six years now. Um, I I first started making work at university. Really, I did a fine art degree and um, started making short films, and then sort of went into the industry not really knowing what I wanted to do. I certainly didn't think I would be doing commercials. I thought I'd be sort of directing my first feature by this point, but I, I started, um, basically I started as a runner uh, in, in, in commercials and I think I didn't really want to direct commercials at that point, but a, a production manager on a job that I was working on showed me <coughs> a few show reels of directors actually at Academy Films where I am now. And it sort of, I think it made me realise that 
you could make strong work that p potentially was a stepping stone onto other things. So I kept, um, I kept running and I kept making work. I made music videos and short films in my own time with friends and then gradually built up a showreel and then was given, was very lucky to be given an opportunity to direct a commercial quite early on. And then the company that gave me, gave me that break then took me on straight after that. So it was, it was quite a quick transition for myself, but even when I started directing, it took a while to actually really break through. Um, and I think it was just sheer persistence and hard work and just being in love with what you do really that, that sort of finally, finally sort of gets you there. Um, my name's Christian, I work at Agile Films, I'm the head of development there. Um, like Nexus, we're a production company based in Shoreditch as well. Um, we have been going for six years, we were set up six years ago by Miles Payne. And again, like Nexus, uh, commercials is really the core of the business and the core of what we do. We also work in digital advertising, um, we do a lot of corporate videos too, which pay the bills. Um, we do a lot of music videos, which definitely don't. And uh, effectively, we kind of work around all areas of production. But also, we are now just starting out moving into the world of feature films as well. Uh, as part of the development department, we have a development fund of £100,000, which we're aiming to put into, roughly speaking, four or five film projects each year. But also, that money is used to develop the reels of the directors that we work with as well. Um, we have 16 directors at the moment who work across all sorts of media. Uh, we have specialists in live action, we have specialists in animation, and we have some who work in mixed media as well. And on the basis of, of those directors, we represent them, uh, but we don't contractually have any agreements with them at all. What we do is a much more free relationship with the directors that we work with. Um, we have an agreement in place where we're the only people who are showing their work, so that they are exclusively repped by us but effectively it allows them to be working with other production companies or on their own basis uh, in a way that means that they're continually doing a lot of work, which in my mind is the most important thing for any director to be doing. Okay, well thanks for those uh, intros guys. Um, I suppose uh, it's kind of going to be the overarching question for it, but I might as well start with it. What, what do you look for in a new signing? When, you, when you're looking for, for new talent to add to your roster, what are you looking for? Uh, I guess we just look, um, uh, well one it's not something we do every week, it's a, so it's a big commitment on behalf of a production company and even you know, more so on behalf of the director, that sort of relationship. So um, um, really what we're looking for, um, we always say unique voice, which I guess um, is uh, we're looking for someone who's going to um, you know, stand out in uh, a, a, an incredibly crowded kind of marketplace and London is more than any is very very crowded with talent so it's got to be someone who's looks um, ha, you know has a, 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 a unique approach and I guess we're looking for a, 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 the main craft skill that we're looking for is kind of storytelling um, uh, we can really help directors in lots of other ways uh, but if they don't do that we can't we can't help them so um, a lot of our directors now work with teams of talent here we kind of put together you know art directors and illustration people and model makers and we and we have quite a kind of good team that we can surround talent with but they have to really have amazing storytelling talent but it's it's that unique voice I think and I guess the other so there's that and then also they have to sit within your roster so um, I can see directors whose work we love, but I would never find them work because people don't come to Nexus for that. Or I can see people whose work I love, but unfortunately Nexus is kind of doing that already and um, it would block other talent in the company. And so we're looking for a kind of balance of uh, talent in the roster. Um, and um, so it's quite a high bunch of things really and that's why it doesn't happen very often and it, you know, and you have a kind of limit to what you can do as well as a company. And do you guys look for anything particular in, in the reels, um, say like shorts or promos or like if, if there's a, a guy who's directed a, a low budget feature and then sends you excerpts, I mean is there something specific you look for? Or if you're looking for a commercials director, are you looking for someone who's done spec commercials? I mean the KFC was was a spec commercial? Generally, I think they're a terrible idea. Spec commercials. And 
they work once in a blue moon and mm. I thought that one was great but it, it's kind of it's not something that we would encourage people to do uh, at one point I remember the Royal College of Art before it shut down its filmmaking course had everyone do a spec commercial it was kind of like a sort of misguided idea that this would make them all ready for the industry mm -hmm. and actually I think the thing that makes people more industry ready is collaboration and um, because that's the big difference between being at college and being <coughs> in the industry and so I think that would be a more useful thing to do is, to, is that students will be involved in more collaborative exercises but <coughs> spec commercials aren't really useful to anyone that Wait, Seb, did you, did you feel you had to create a unique voice in order to, to get signed up or were you the Susan Boyle of <laughs> I mean, <coughs> I think funny, I, I sort of only now really am I kind of feeling that I'm sort of discovering a, a voice, you know, so um, it does take a bit of time and it, it takes a while to kind of get that clarity in your own work really. Um, and that just comes from making work, you know, and I, th I think the most important thing if you're getting started is to get out there and do it. I mean, there's facilities now where, you know, you can get a 5D, 7D, whatever, you can go and shoot a film. Um, I think when I started it wasn't quite as simple as that. Um, I mean, you could shoot stuff on video or whatever, but you can shoot stuff now on 5D, it looks great, you know. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a case of if you're really hungry for it, you just go out there and make stuff. Um, and it's through that process that you sort of distill <coughs> a style or you know you, you find what you're good at you find what you don't like but you, you're not going to know that when you as soon as you leave college you know I mean, Jamie you, you were saying that when you guys started out it was mainly sort of music based music videos have you when you're looking for talent now is that do you look for it in a different way because because you've yeah. moved into commercials we've so? kind of always wanted to sign directors I think I think first it's kind of there's an element of kind of gut feeling you see a bit of work and you're like okay that's interesting that's, and then you, can, you want to dig deep and you want to meet the director and find out what they want to do and commercials is always something that you know, pretty much every director wants to, wants to work in commercials um, but you also want to look at what the kind of long term vision for the director is whether it's uh, they've got uh, documentaries they want to develop or they want to get into features is it you know, putting together with script writers and kind of getting an overview of what they want to do. One of the other questions I was going to ask about the reels is how much do you look for sort of um, what that's aesthetically pleasing so uh, I notice what we get sent quite a lot um, to our website is the animation people in their bedrooms can pretty much make it look professional standard because they can spend four years mm -hmm. refining it yeah. and live action stuff even if they've got the, the, the sort of best cameras, they, there's, they may not have the grading or anything like that at the end, and the therefore it just doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily Lights. look. The budget di difference is enormous. So, would you, when you're looking at say live action, I mean we can talk about animation <coughs> as well. But are you will you discriminate against it if if it doesn't necessarily look right? If it is it the idea that say or like you know the techniques right, but they haven't necessarily you know, got it graded just right, or they didn't, they didn't get the lighting right or anything. Um, there's, you, you were nodding there, Christian, yeah, so no, I'm going to fire you. But that's <laughs> absolutely something we do take into consideration 100%, and it's also something, you know, uh, looking at it from our perspective as well, if we were to take a reel into, um, uh, a new director's reel into an agency, uh, there is that sense that animation does just manage to hit home much more easily as a new director, your style. Uh, either fits a brand or it doesn't, but if it fits a brand, it's it's great. It's obvious. It's there. It doesn't matter if you've never directed a commercial before because it's it's animation. It can be uh, developed in that sense. Uh, and I don't mean this disparagingly. It does seem sometimes like the the guys at the agencies don't have the biggest imagination in the world when it comes to live action stuff. To the point where they're almost like, well, he hasn't done a commercial. Uh, can he actually manage to develop this? And so this is why we spend a lot of time at, at Agile with our younger directors developing their reels to a point where they do have stuff on there that once, you know, we, we've seen, um, as you say, the slightly badly graded stuff, the slightly, you know, unprofessional stuff because it just takes a lot more time uh, from a from a live action perspective to pull together a really good looking piece of work. And we want to make, you know, if we recognise the, the, the talent in that director from other perspectives, we'll develop that so that their reel does look professional to a level where we can bring it into an agency and they can ignore it. <laughs> I, <think laughs> so. I, I was trying to think if that's how it happened. I think that if the director came in with a reel that that my overriding response was that the lighting's not very good, then we probably wouldn't sign them. Because basically, uh, my overriding response would probably be, that was an amazing film, 
someone down the line might go, yeah, the light wasn't very good. Mm. But you basically, that is, it's not, no one's really looking at it that way. Mm. No, no one's looking at all those sort of individual costumes. It's just like, did the film work? And were you really interested in it? Mm. And then it might be, yeah, it wasn't a great bit, but well, the next one. No, it, 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 it basically, then we're going to take that out to other people, be that commercials or anyone in any aspect of, because uh, basically all film is commercial, mm. you know, basically. Um, even the arts thing as a kind of ultimately there's a money and a, a, a transaction and a persuasion and if that work can't persuade people then um, it, 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 will, it will fail at the first hurdle and I think um, basically we've signed directors with work that is less polished and slick and but you know and we're really that may well have been part of its charm it might not have been but it's kind of it was the idea and the film just won through and so I don't think we're I, I don't really imagine anyone's really looking at that mm. kind of thing in that way. I'm actually quite conscious of time because I realise that we're, uh, we're running out so I mean has anyone I've got loads more questions but if anyone in the audience has got any questions uh, they want to fire out this guy's hands went straight <laughs> up. <laughs> Hi guys um, I'm interested in what you guys are saying in, in the deficit of support uh, for young filmmakers basically because I'm aware that once you get into industry there are multifarious voices that you know sort of influence how commercial creative art works so if you're a young director for example there's the agency there's the, the client there's the creative director there's all of these sort of you know senior quite scary people who are having an impact on the ultimate the ultimate product and the key thing to what you guys are saying is, is that you need to maintain some sort of unique voice so i suppose my question is how do you, when you're starting out and you walk into a room of 10 people who are all, you know, have their own quite strong opinions, how do you maintain your unique voice and still come out of that with a product that you're personally satisfied with? And does that always happen? Uh, I, think, I think there's always, whenever, whenever money's involved, so whether you're making a movie or commercial or, you know, even going back to when Joshua, Joshua Reynolds was painting a portrait and for some big landowner, who is paying them money to do it? There's always, there's always conflict of sort when sort of art meets industry in, in whatever form. So, um, I think I think that's that's very true, but it's not exclusive to commercials. I think it's actually it's actually a really good skill to learn, um, and it's something I've sort of I started doing really badly. Basically, um, I think in, initially I was quite aggressive when when confronted by some creative director who said it should be done in this way and um, uh, you know would near threaten violence you know? <laughs> um, but I think you kind of learn to play the game a bit really and it's it's just like a tap dance you know you, it's kind of like if someone's got a bit of an ego and really wants to feel like they put their stamp on the film then you know cleverly make them feel like they have had a part in this you know sort of massage their ego a bit it's you learn you learn ways in which to be collaborative but at the same time retain a sort of a central vision because if you don't then it just all falls to pieces. When you're saying about experience, do, do you find that with experience um, do the agencies sort of like come back a little bit? If you're a new director are they more hands on in no 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 we want it this way you don't know what you're doing? Hopefully like they, more most of the directors we've had they've had some sort of unique piece of work and they've come for them for this thing and right. they've respected what that is and it's a lot to do with who you work with I mean, basically, actually, I mean, I imagine most of us here are really talking about a very small percentage of advertising, about the, the, the three or four percent of it that's really interesting and creative and working with those right teams. And I think the way that you can best protect yourself is like, who do you work with? Mm. And like, you know, if you if you if you walk into a, um, uh, I don't want to besmirch any particular <laughs> client, but like a Procter and Gamble, there you go, I'll besmirch them. You know, work with them. So basically, you work with like a Procter and Gamble ad, and you, you're going in there that, that and you've got ideas about what that's going to be then you you know that's very naive there's a certain way that those things are made um, they're researched to death every shot has to do a certain type of thing you know it's going to be you can't fight that but if you're working with other clients and you know you pick the right people and the right creative opportunities and you work with great people then that's going to be a lot easier and um, that's how you can that's really the only way you can really protect yourself going into those meetings is that you're going into meetings with people who are who are going to value what you do, and it's not you don't always get that right, uh, but you can you can try. Should newcomers almost expect the crap jobs to begin with, though, because they won't necessarily um, get get those massive ones? I don't, think you, I don't think you have to. No, I think um, 
we've had some directors we've we, we've only really just sort of broken into commercials in the last two years properly. We got remember we got, remember being called a bunch of hippies by Star Trek <laughs> for the first reels that we took in. They said we love it when you hippies bring your reels in. <laughs> so we kind of went back and like, okay, cheers. We went back and kind of really got directors to focus on the work that they wanted to do. And it was um, so some of our directors have only just started um, started working commercials properly, but. They're uh, like 32, I think, of um, they've shot six or seven spots this year, of uh, having shot nothing before that, and so some really nice, really nice campaigns. Um, but it's just sticking to kind of the, the work that they wanted to do, and they're actually come, they're, the last spot they shot, they've come up against a kind of creative director who's tried to change everything around, and uh, and it kind of tempers flared a little bit. And, um, but for I think you're right in terms of it's, it's about picking battles, picking what you want to what ground you're going to give here but you make sure you keep this mm. this sort of thing but yeah and I, d I don't think i don't think you have to kind of go in and i think i'd advise not to go in and do some sort of crap advertising jobs um to because you know it's hard to break out of that area once you've done that yeah, yeah. i mean there's one one thing you can do though is that you're unlikely to get a great ad straight off the bat you know um and I think I think what you what's an important thing to learn is to to look at a script and try and see something in it, one element in it that you think is strong, and pull that out and make something of it. So, so I think a bad script sometimes, <coughs> on first viewing a bad script, don't just throw it in the bin. Just just really look at it, and and try and find something in it that you mm. could see a film that you'd be proud of making, and pitch it back to them. Right, have we got any other questions from the audience? Oh, let's ask, um, would you prefer more so to look at individual pieces or would you want to see maybe a two minute cut together reel? What would be more? Uh, uh, dumping in, I hate montages because yeah. they show you nothing. Yeah, we don't know. Montages are not useful. But they are, they're fine if you're trying to show off uh, like art direction or an animation reel that's not a directing reel, but for direction you need the pieces, they're cool. But I just want to wrap up really with, um, have you guys got just the essential do's and don'ts? Say, I mean, what, what would you say to, to, to young directors that want to break into commercials? I think, I think the most important thing is something that should already, already be there, which is just a, a steely desire to, to, to make films and to um, be successful in the industry and all those things. I think the key things should already be there, really. Um, and then what you do beyond that, sort of summing up a lot of perhaps what we said is, you know, work a lot to get experience and find a voice that represents who you are. Because I think that there's, there's a lot of good directors out there and to compete with them, you need to offer something else. And the best thing you can offer is what's at the heart of, of you, really, you know, what, what, what excites you. Um, so I think it's just a process of, it sounds simple, but it's not. Getting to understand what that is, what you want to say and how you want to say it, that's really the, the most crucial thing, I think. Um, and then that's where you'll make your best work. Christian, anything to add? No yeah. montages, I'm guessing. Yeah, no montages. <laughs> um, I, I, definitely, uh, I definitely say that you, you, you have to understand the best way to represent yourself, and, and online it's so easy to do now. Um, you know, get a obviously everybody should be on Vimeo, of course, but get a Tumblr blog. They don't cost anything, obviously. Get business cards done, and then do some research in terms of if you're trying to approach a production company, figure out the best way, understand the best way that each production company wants to be approached. Because I, you know, personally, I mean, it's clearly on our website. If, to get in touch with us, it's best to send an email. The number of people who call, can I speak to Christian, or, or turn up at the office, uh, you know, it's just not going to help you because. Uh, I would be annoyed. <laughs> that's, it, that's the bottom line. It's just a, you know, that might be different from other production companies who might prefer you to turn up. I don't know if that's always the case. But yeah, just you know, make sure you're aware of the way the business Pops. works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can pass love it. So I heard the address. Yeah. We'll hand out the address. <laughs> Chris, you get anything to? And uh, yeah, not much the same. I think sort of keep directing. Uh, know yourself. Uh, know uh, the industry. Kind of really uh, immerse yourself in the industry and keep your chin up, that's what I'd say. I, said, I think some of the best results we personally had as a company has been um, with directors is where they, they know where they want to go, they know what they want to do and produce, you know, directing that work and then the agencies come to them 
Um, so it's putting the work out there, the agencies come to them, rather than us kind of going and selling it too hard, the agencies come to them and that's where the real kind of kicks off from that side, and the relationships with the agencies as well. Great. Well, I hope that's been uh, helpful for everyone. Uh, if you'd just like to join me in thanking uh, the guests here today, it's 